State Representative Julie Harhart. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> I hope you know that. And uh, welcome to tonight's presentation on the financial um, aid of, for higher education. Um, I want to take a moment to thank the Catasauqua School uh, District for allowing us to use the high school auditorium as well as all the financial aid experts with us here tonight. Um, I once again, um, I am once again hosting this program because I know as a parent, and believe me, I did have a daughter that went to college and I know what you're going through. Um, you want the best for your children and that usually means helping them achieve their professional dreams by the way of quality higher education. And of course, we also know the cost of higher education is continuing to climb higher and higher every year. Coupled with the um, economic struggles, many families cope with, and many of you are probably wondering how you can afford to send your son or daughter to college. Um, that is why I have um, decided, or have had this gathering here tonight. Um, whether you are interested in learning more about grants through the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency, saving money through the state's tuition account program, possibly military funding, or what financial aid options are available at area colleges and universities, we will have that information available for you tonight. Why do we ask you to be here and to begin planning with your children? This is a uh, a key, the, co uh, the cooperative arrangement between the students and the parents is a, is a key thing you need to always remember. And I always ask, I've done so many of these over the years, students think that, you know, I want to go to Southern Cal, I want to go to Miami, and that's my ideal choice, and that's where I'm going to go. Well, if mom and dad don't put the stamp of approval on that choice, that he or she's not probably going to go there. So it's a cooperative agree, uh, program, and I want you to take a look at the, um, after tonight, sit down with your children, take a look at the schedule that we distributed. There's a lot of important things on there. Even as a freshman, you want to begin college planning as early as the freshman and sophomore year in terms of selecting the right kinds of courses. Students, your, your children don't know what they want to do. They're going to be an astronaut one day and an engineer the next, and uh, God knows what, a dancer the next night. So regardless of what they want to pursue, and, and there's going to be multiple choices. College students are, are well known today for changing their major two or three different times while they're in college. So even at that time of their education, they're, uh, they're still making choices and changing their mind. So early planning, get all those good courses under your belt. Start even in middle school where you're getting the right kinds of math courses that will prepare you to sequentially uh, take, the right, uh, take the right kinds of classes as well as succeed in those classes. So, so it's important to start earlier. You may, you're, again, your child may be interested in something technological. Well, make sure they get, start to get the math and science early on in their high school career. Really important things of that nature. One of the probably, as an admissions director, I've, I've been an admissions director for 26 years and have been in the college admissions profession for over 30 years. Probably the biggest weakness Students today are very good in math and, and science, and, and generally speaking. Probably the area of weakest, uh, their weakest skills oftentimes are in communications. How well they write, or how well they communicate. It's, they're texting everything and asking them to put a, an essay together that makes sense and follows the, the sequence of their thoughts. Very, very important. So communication is probably one of the uh, areas that students really need to kind of focus in on. Uh, Again, the, the, the essence of tonight's program is about financial aid. Again, they don't work. Even at uh, LTRIC, we're hosting uh, FAFSA completion nights. We, they're all through uh, February, March, and April because you, you, know, you want to get them all done by, by the time April comes. So what I'd like to also suggest, again, thinking about how the, the long-term planning takes place. The, uh, when, when, uh, for the parents who have children who are seniors, who are they again? Okay, have they applied for colleges? They, they have all their applications in? How about you, sir? Okay, so for those who aren't, uh, who, those parents who don't have children who are seniors, they're applying in their senior year, preferably early in your senior year. So when you think about, from the college admissions perspective, what do you think the most important year of high school is for college admissions professionals? Junior year. Why is that? It's not, it's not that academically it's more rigorous than the senior year. It's probably not. However, at the conclusion of your junior year, 
you're going to have a class rank that's going to be calculated. You're going to have a GPA that's going to be calculated. And hopefully you'll have SATs. One of the key components on here that I think you need to remember is if you're looking at a school that's fairly selective and they place a lot of emphasis on SATs, make sure that your child takes the SATs at least twice during the junior year. Twice during the junior year. Also plan on fall of your senior year. Because if you take them tw uh, once as a junior and you don't get the scores you want or the scores that the colleges want, now the pressure's on. The next time you can take them is October of your senior year. And what happens if you don't get the right kind of score, that, again, that the college requires? It's not that the colleges solely place emphasis. Clearly, the most important area is the academic record that the student is undertaking and what kind of grades. And, and you know, an AP uh, calculus is you know, carries certainly more value than, uh, than a lo lesser level class. So you need to be thinking about things of that nature. So plan, plan, plan. It's, it's so important. Now, the summer between junior and senior year is probably the most important summer that takes place because what you want to be doing, uh, students, you know, they, they're looking at colleges and, and they're looking at everybody, every college they see on Saturday afternoon playing football is, oh, I want to apply to University of Nebraska. I want to go to Michigan. I want to go to Penn State. The reality is you, look, you want to look for a college that is the, is the, provides the best fit, academically, socially, uh, location, size, uh, public, private, local, far. All those, comp all those factors come into play when you're making a decision. Uh, students are going to think they're going to apply to, uh, many colleges also have free applications. We don't charge you for an application. Many colleges have done it, even the private institutions. Though still many will, you know, ask for a, you know, $50 application fee. So what you need to be doing, you know, applying to 20 different colleges might be a pretty expensive venture. So you want to basically, 15 college choices might be too much. One or two is not enough. So you want to have a, a balance, maybe six to eight colleges that you want to, that seriously, that you're considering. Summertime, as I mentioned, Go visit those colleges. Contact them. If, if you're interested in the college, you go onto their websites, fill out the form for prospective students. And you're then going to get invitations to open house programs for the summer. We all do things during the summertime on our campuses or early in the fall for open houses. So get on our campuses. How they look and feel is what you need to determine yourself. You want to use that gut feeling. I'm a field representative for the Pennsylvania 529 College Savings Program. Um, if any of you have heard of, it's the TAP program, the tuition account program. It's, it's just been reintroduced as the PA 529 college savings program. And what it is, is it's the tax advantage way to save for and eventually pay for a loved one's future qualified higher education expenses. Now what I mean by future qualified higher education expenses is it's not just for tuition only. You can use the monies that you save for tuition, fees, books, room and board, on and off campus housing. And another important fact is it's not just for PA schools. You're able to use the PA 529 College Savings Program for schools nationally or overseas as long as the money, as long as the school is eligible to participate with federal financial aid. So as long as the institution has a federal school code. So it could go from a community college to a technical school to an Empire Beauty School. Um, and obviously a good problem to have. Uh, a lot of people tend to say, well, what if there's money left over in my 529 plan after school, which I always love hearing because, you know, I, I pray sometimes that I actually have that problem with my children. Um, but uh, in a serious note, if there is monies left over, you're able to transfer it to another beneficiary. So my children are two years apart, so I could transfer some money down to my younger son. Or they can also use the money for graduate school, medical school, or law school. So there's a lot of things that you're able to do um, you know, with the money after they may be done with the four-year or two-year or a technical um, type institution. With the PA plan too, um, there's two types of plans within the program. There's the PA 529 Guaranteed Savings Plan or the PA Investment Plan. The basic difference between the two is how they grow. The Guaranteed uh, Savings Program is you purchase college credits at today's price and it grows by keeping pace with tuition inflation. So what you're doing is if my father um, buys a semester for his grandkids, um, you know, I can buy 
Uh, or I could purchase, say, 12 credits at Penn State, and with my son being six years old, I can buy 12 credits for him today rather than pay for when he's 18 or 19 and going to Penn State. So that's the concept behind the guaranteed, program, guaranteed savings program. You're buying the college credits at today's rate. Um, the investment plan, it's going to be based on the ups and downs of the market. Um, so, you know, either have the same tax advantages, and that's what I wanted to point on quickly, too. With the PA 5 to 9 college savings program, the tax advantages are the most attractive trait to this program. When you put the monies into the 5 to 9 plan, and it could be mom, dad, step parents, guardians, loved ones, neighbors, you don't even have to be related to the child. When, when the person puts money into the PA 5 to 9 plan, you could deduct what you put in off of your state income tax. So you could deduct up to $14,000 per beneficiary per year off your state income tax. And if you file jointly with the spouse and they make at least $14,000, you could deduct $28,000 per beneficiary per year. It grows tax deferred. So say you put $5,000 in and it grows to be $10,000, that $5,000 worth of growth is tax deferred. And when you have that, say, $10,000 to spend for tuition, fees, books, et cetera, it's tax free. So even if the, the parents and, and, and people here tonight um, say, well, you know, my son or daughter or loved one's already in 9th, 10th, or 11th, or 12th grade. It's maybe a little, it's maybe a little late. Well, I can say if, if they have brothers or sisters that are more in 8th grade or lower, the guaranteed savings plan is a great idea because it's the longer you save, the more it can grow. But the thing to take home, too, and just think about is even if you put monies into our investment plan, um, and only have a short time um, for it to, for savings, um, you can at least, with this savings vehicle compared to some others, um, deduct what you put in off your state income tax. So even if, even if the son or daughter is going this semester to a school and you have money set aside in a savings or you have money somewhere um, that's not gaining a tax advantage, you can open a 529 plan, put it into it, and immediately take it out and use for um, expenses, and then you could take advantage of that um, state tax deduction where you couldn't have with another savings vehicle. Our major, major mission is to assist students in accessing post-secondary education, whether it's a community college, a state school, state-related school like Penn State, University of Pittsburgh, Temple, um, Lincoln University are all state-related schools private institutions, business trade technical schools, hospital schools of nursing. They have lots of choices out there that are available to them. In addition to that, we also try to assist the students in meeting their educational expenses by managing and administering the Pennsylvania State Grant Program, which is our flagship program. And then there are a few other grant and scholarship programs that we administer on uh, behalf of other state agencies as well. This evening I'm going to share with you just some information about the financial aid process and specifically about what aid is available from the state. Uh, I know at the table, my table, there's tons of information that's available to you. Uh, I want you to know that all of that information is available on the FIA website, which is FIA.org. All the links that are on that website are all interactive, so you can go into the different pieces of information that, and resources that we uh, link you to and then come back to the FIA website. Uh, and we certainly have it in uh, publication as well. A couple of things before I get started. I do want to share or talk about some of the information that's out there that I think will be very helpful for my freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and also my senior families. One of the pieces that you will see, if you did not pick it up, you may want to do this uh, when you leave, is called the Pennsylvania Student Aid Guide. Uh, this is a guide that we put together each year, and it will provide you with an overview of the whole financial aid process. So I know some of you are, are overwhelmed by it and may feel that the process is very uh, complex. So we try to break it down for you and give you some information in terms of where do you start, you know, what type of aid is out there, uh, who, where does that aid come from, and then what is the process to apply for financial aid. So in this guide, we'll give you information about not only the state grant program and all the other programs that we administer, but also information about aid that's available through the federal government, what forms you need to fill out, deadline dates that you need to fill that out, a little bit of information about the institutional process, a lot of good websites, and phone numbers available to assist you and help you with that. So especially for my freshmen, sophomore, and juniors, this is a great resource for you to have now because it's a starting point for you to start looking at some of these things early on.
I think many people discount private schools thinking that they're too expensive. Just to give you an example, Moravian this year, our tuition and fees is $35,518. To live on campus, it's another $10,000 and change. It's a lot of money. <laughs> um, but I think the one thing about private schools is that we are a big source of funding for our students. We are the largest source of funding at, at our school for the financial aid that our students receive. Our students are eligible for all federal grants, loans, and work programs as well as the state grant program and in addition to that we have merit scholarships which the student can earn through their academic performance in high school as well as need-based funds that are based on a family's financial situation so there is significant funding at schools like Moravian to help families fund that education and we can oftentimes make it a, an affordable option for families so I think my biggest advice is don't ever think a school is too expensive for you until you go through the financial aid process and see what types of aid the student is eligible for. With respect to merit scholarships, at most schools, those decisions about merit money, they're made at the time of application. They're based on the application for admission and the materials provided by the student in the form of the high school transcript, SAT scores, could be recommendation. There are merit scholarships at schools based on athletics. There are merit, not at Moravian, we're a Division III school. So you want to just be aware of what the school offers with respect to that. There are talent scholarships. We offer music scholarships. Some schools offer um, student government scholarships or scholarships for students in the National Honor Society. So just be aware of the different programs that are available to the students and what your student offers that admissions program um, in the way of talent or academics that would earn them a merit scholarship. With respect to need-based grants, um, we use the FAFSA as a starting point for determining a family's financial need to award need-based grants. Um, and then we do have a supplemental form as well. As Michael mentioned, many schools have a supplemental form. Ours is a free application we provide to our students, but many private schools do require the CSS profile, which does require a fee to have that application sent to the school. So you just want to be aware at the specific schools that your student is applying, what the applications are that are required. Again, looking at deadlines, we have a priority deadline of March 1st. Many schools have a similar type deadline, March 1st, March 15th. And really, that's a priority deadline for their institutional aid. As I said, we do have a lot of resources available, but you'd be amazed at how fast I can spend them <laughs> when I get started. So you want to apply early and meet the deadlines at private schools so that you can take full advantage of the resources that they have available to you. I also want to emphasize the free help in filling out applications. Never pay to have your FAFSA completed for you. Call the schools for help if you have a question. We have a FAFSA completion day coming up on February 22nd. It's a Saturday. You can come to our campus and one of the members of our staff will help you complete your FAFSA at a computer in a computer lab. We'll walk you through the process. Many schools have programs like that, the community colleges, um, other private schools. So please know that there are free resources out there to help you with, with your application. And I'd like to give you some information about clock hour schools. Unlike semester schools, um, we calculate our programs by clock hours. Like if you're interested in cosmetology, the hours needed to complete the program is only 1,260 hours. So you could do that in less than a year and be out working. Um, some of the differences to, compared to uh, semester school to clock hours is that we have class starts every three weeks, unlike some other schools where you need to wait until the fall to start or in their spring semester. Our orientation is the Tuesday prior to the class start. And the deadline to enroll and complete the FAFSA is only 10 days prior to the start of the school. So even if you wait till the last minute, you could still attend Empire School by um, just completing the FAFSA 10 days prior to the start date. And we'll prepare an estimated financial plan for you once you do complete the FAFSA based upon your expected family contribution. That's the number that you get when you complete the FAFSA. That's what drives your financial aid eligibility. And the federal government did just announce for the 2014-15 school year that the maximum Pell Grant will be $5,730. So that is what is eligible for an academic year. That's the maximum amount, and it, then that's based upon your EFC, the number that you get when you complete the FAFSA, in order to determine what you will be exactly eligible for. 
Also at Empire, we offer the SEOG, Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant. That ranges between one and $300. Our students are eligible for direct loans, and a parent could also apply for a Parent PLUS loan. And usually between those three or four sources, that will cover the charges at Empire Beauty School. Also, the majority of Empire Beauty Schools are approved by Veterans Affairs, in which the students who are eligible for VA benefits could use their educational benefits at Empire. We have over 100 campuses throughout the United States. Locally, uh, we have one at uh, the Lehigh Valley at the Whitehall School. And also, we have schools nearby in Allentown, um, Lancaster, York, Lebanon, Hanover, Reading, and Pottsville, which is where our home office is located. Let's see, we have other scholarships that are available, especially to seniors. There is one deadline we have for that, and that would be to complete it by May 1st. And we have other scholarships available too, and you could view those on our website at empire.edu. For the most part at Lincoln Technical Institute and most trade schools, we are usually one campus of many. Like Lincoln Technical Institute is one of over 46 locations, the closest campus to here being in Allentown. One of the things I like the most of how we kind of set up our financial aid process at a technical school is admissions works very closely with our financial aid team. So when you come in for an interview, with our location, what happens is you'll sit with an admissions representative that will go over the basic concept of our school, the programs we have at the school, and we try to find a close fit for you in order to get information about the program. Before you leave the campus that day, you will sit with a financial aid advisor, and they will go over the, pretty much the process. And I know the financial aid process could be very difficult, and a lot of people get confused through it, so our financial aid advisors will go through the entire process with you. They find out what you're eligible for and if you qualify for loans, for grants, and they will pretty much show you what your payments are going to be before you would even start the program. Um, most of our programs are usually less than two years, so it's not the traditional four-year way of running business, but um, and they usually are a little bit more career specific where you're not taking the gen as the English is the math, the science is the history. So it's a little, our schools are a little set up differently in that matter. But one of the things that we do push a lot at our schools are scholarships. Um, at our Allentown location, we do offer two full and two half scholarships each year. And that is done through scholarship testing that's for high school seniors. For an example, our next test would be this Saturday. And we try to hold the test once a month and the scholarship test is, if you're going for one of our technical programs, it's more based on a logic test. And for our medical programs, it's more of a, an analogy test. And then what happens is at the end of the year, we take those scores of the test, and our top students come in for an interview. Based on that interview process with a board of people from the industry, um, it's decided who would get a full or half scholarship. Um, there's also Imagine America scholarships that are available for students uh, applying to technical schools. So there's other forms of financial um, matters you can get through going to a technical school as well. The National Guard, with six years of your life, one weekend a month, two weeks a year, can provide you with $3,311 a semester through a Pennsylvania EAP program, which is run through FIA. Um, administered through FIA, and federal tuition assistance in the amount of $250 a credit hour up to $4,000 a year. Also, you would get Montgomery GI Bill, 1606. Every month, you would get around $362. I say around because every year on October 1st, it changes. And I know some of you guys are freshmen, ju sophomores, juniors. It goes up every year, four or five dollars. So figure around 362 a month will go into your pocket. $3,311 is exactly the price of a state school. So that is 100% of the cost of tuition. Um, FTA can be added with it, and together that can pay 100% of the cost of tuition and 100% of the cost of fees, and $356 in your pocket for doing nothing. Now, 
the one weekend a month, two weeks a year, is doing something. But you will also be paid for that. Um, a, a private probably is going to make about $225 a month for two days' worth of work. Um, a little bit more if it's three days' worth of work. And you make a pretty decent amount. Um, two weeks, I'd say, twelve or $1,300 for going away for two weeks, working hard. I mean, they're long days. They're hard days, um, but never hurt anyone. Um, all that money can be put for, forth to school. You can use your 529, you can use your scholarships, you can use your FIA money, you can use your grants. None of those take into any account the money that I'm giving you. So you could very well afford the Moravians and the Lehigh Universities of the world. Um, fabulous schools, just pricey. What we try to usually do with these type of uh, events is just give you some different ideas of what to look at for school. Uh, so as we already stated, you heard from Moravia and stuff like that, that all state schools are, uh, the tuition is the same amount. It's, it's run by the state. Uh, the fees can be a little bit different. Uh, but what happens is state schools were designed to give um, you a good four-year education uh, and with help with FIA and other places at a more reasonable rate. Uh, give you an idea, if you just do tuition and fees for the whole year, is roughly about 9,000 for Kutztown. Uh, so that's kind of what it's designed, that's what state schools are designed for. So state schools are designed for make, keep the cost down, keep it affordable, uh, hopefully you'll have a way to manage to go to school with just a lot of the basic aid. Uh, the state schools, you're not gonna get that endowment money that's out there at the private schools, there's not gonna be tons and tons of merit money. Uh, there's some, there's always, like any other place, there's Board of Governors, there's a couple merit-based, like they said, that when you do admissions, um, they process it and see if you're eligible for it. Uh, but for the most part, uh, Kutztowns and all the state schools are designed to hopefully keep it a little more reasonable uh, to come to school. So if you're lucky enough to be near one of the close ones, like in this area, Kutztown is drivable. So if you commute, uh, you could uh, make it through school uh, for just your tuition and fees for 9000 for the year. Um, and then, of course, there's other expenses, but just to get through to school. Now, of course, if you're on room and board, it gets up there, too. It's closer to about 18000 for the year with room and board. Uh, most of aid for a school, state school, is based off FAFSA form. Uh, it's going to be the standard aid that you get, the loans, the fees, everything everybody's been talking about, the, FIA, the PEL and the FIA are your grants that... Uh, uh, the ones you don't have to pay back, that's what you want to see. Uh, it's all based on what was mentioned before. You'll hear the word EFC. The lower your EFC is, the more grants you're eligible for. Federal aid, federal aid is federal aid. There's nobody gets anything different from federal aid. Federal aid is the max PAL you can get. I, somebody mentioned it was 57 or so next year. Uh, that's still based on your EFC, based on your need. It goes up and down. Nobody can get more no matter where you go, private. Uh, community colleges, anything like that, state colleges. Loans are standard. Uh, your standard loans you'll hear and what you'll get in your award letters. Um, most people won't get award letters out to about March to give you a real good idea what you have for aid. Uh, the standard loads are 5500 for the freshmen coming in. Uh, that's what you're eligible for. Uh, some of the things we try to teach real quick in these things, you'll start to hear the word sub and on sub loan. Uh, the biggest difference when you see that on your award letter and you get notices about your aid, the biggest difference is the interest rate's the same, but the on-sub loans, you have to pay the interest on the, uh, the loans immediately. They accrue immediately while you're in school. Government does not pay the interest on on-sub loans. So if you're lucky enough to not need full loans, the first thing you get rid of or reduce is on-sub loans. I really hope that you enjoyed uh, the panelists. I hope this has been information, you know, very informational to you. And please remember, um, it is overwhelming and um, there is a lot of information that you have, but if you need any assistance to make a connection with any of these people, uh, my staff is always available and we can help in any way that we can as well um, through our office. So don't hesitate to call us as well.